Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. Today, we have a wonderful afterlife guest. I'll be doing a discussion with Patrick Swayze in the afterlife. Now, I know Patrick Swayze from the movie Dirty Dancing, one of the iconic movies, and I'm sure some of you who are mega fans are screaming at your YouTube right now because you have so many other wonderful movies you would like to share of Patrick's. And if you would like to do that, don't worry, you can make recommendations in the comments section for your favorite movies with Patrick Swayze in them. All right, so Patrick will come in and sit down. Yep, he's sitting right across from me. It looks like there's hardwood floors and we're in like a bar setting. And he's got a black shirt on and black pants and a black belt and black shoes. So he literally looks like he's going to dance or something. Um, you are quite tall. He's taller than I expected him to be. Let me just say he looks at least six feet, maybe six one. It looks, looks about six feet. I could be wrong, 5'11", 5 5'11 11, 5 11 and a half. I don't know. He looks pretty tall and um, he looks youthful. He's got a very um, distinguished face. Oh, the movie Ghost. Oh my gosh, he's like, Bridget, how could you not mention that movie? You are a psychic after all. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> he's very warm. He's very genuine. I feel like you're somebody I could have dinner with. I like you. I actually genuinely like you. It's so cool to meet a spirit in the afterlife that I feel like as people, we would get along. He said, oh, sure, sure we would. Absolutely. He says, absolutely. And then he says something um, he references his wife. I think he was married at the time of his death. I also hear the name Patty. I'm not sure who that is, but he says, Pat, I hear Patty. Um, and I, and so Patrick, I, you came up twice and I thought, okay, I'm just going to channel you then. I'm just going to channel you. Um, and I will say that I admire dancing, good dancing, and you are a fantastic dancer. He says, well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I said, thank you, thank you. So is that the career-wise? So you're in movies, you're in movies and things, and you are obviously dancing, a dancer. So were you an actor first or a dancer first? Or how does that, how did that play out for you? How, how is that? Describe that. Can you talk about that a little bit? I dance, I've been a, I've been a dancer ever since I was a little kid. And... You know, I used to screw around. I had a lot of energy. My mom said I had a lot of energy. I used to screw around and, you know, do crazy tricks and things, you know. Um, not too crazy, not like backflips off the wall or anything, but pretty close to that stuff. I was uh, kind of a daredevil, she might say. Um, my grandma would probably say I was a sweetheart, but uh, kind of a mischievous boy. But definitely dancing is at my heart. It's at my heart. It's at my heart, and you felt that right away, so... Um, thank you for that. Thank you for seeing me as a dancer. That's at my heart. But you were a heartthrob, Mr. Patrick Swayze. I mean, you were like, you know, easy on the eyes and very talented. And so talk to me about acting. When did you get kind of the bug for acting? Did you have that? Or is that something somebody just offered to you or that kind of a thing? Tell me about that a little bit. Well, I had a friend that hooked me up with an agent, got me in. And, you know, you, you know, you have to have, somebody has to promote you in Hollywood. It's not like to these big movie moguls, you don't just go, you know, knock on their door and say, yeah, I'd like to speak to Mr. So-and-so, please. And it's not like that. In order to even get an appointment, in order to not, you know, get kicked out on your ass when you go there, you have to know somebody or somebody has to introduce you. So I wasn't really interested in the whole fancy party thing and the, you know, hobnobbing and things. So I, I knew I had to get an agent if I, if I wanted to be in film. And I never really had a... a, a thought about being in like TV shows and things. Um, but he shows me that he had some experience with TV shows or made for TV movies. Um, but he says, I, I wanted to be in movies. Yeah, I wanted to make movies. I thought it would be really great um, to do that. But I, I did a lot of um, stage stage performances, you know, like musicals and things where um, they need dancers and actors so you could do both. And that was... Um, the place where I started, where I kind of, uh, where I realized that, 
hey, this could be my thing, you know? I can dance and I can act, you know? And then I wanted to get into to, um, to film, you know? And so that's when I got an agent. And I had a friend of mine, a buddy of mine, uh, introduced me to someone that um, was able to get me in to some auditions. And the first couple of things I did, I gotta be honest, I thought, I don't know if this is for me. I mean, I don't wanna be, you know, a model and um, just another pretty face, you know? Did you do some modeling? Yes, I did, because that's how you pay the bills. That's how you get seen and noticed. You're gonna take anything you can within reason, you know? I don't wanna do any hemorrhoid commercials or anything like that, you know? Gotta keep up the, the image, but... Uh, <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You have to pay the bills. But I, uh, I definitely, uh, I, I was lucky though. I got, I got kind of a, a break in a smaller production in a movie that not a lot of people heard of. And then um, not, not a lot of people, people hadn't really heard of me. And I got my break with a bunch of other actors at the same time. And so we all kind of uh, grew our careers together. I think you'd say. Okay, so I see an image of that and I feel like I know the movie. He says, oh, come on now, you're much younger than I am. I'm not that much younger than you, not even. I'm feeling like you were like in your 60s when you transitioned, when you died. He says, pretty close, but let's not talk about age. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it's more how you feel, right? It's more how you feel. Thank you, I really appreciate that, especially as a, 40 something woman. I appreciate that. Um, so I see the picture of the movie, I think, and there's multiple actors that I would recognize, um, faces of people I would recognize. I recognize them all. Um, young people that I recognize in movies. Um, gosh, I can't think of any names, so I can't recognize. I can see their faces. You guys are probably screaming at me. Sorry, Above Life Channel viewers. Sorry. Uh, if you know the movie, write it in the comments below. Um, gosh, I almost feel like it's like a Ralph Macchio and gosh, a Sean somebody maybe. I can't, I kind of can see his face, but I can't think of who he is. Um, okay. So anyway, I'm sorry. I get off. Like I get stuck on that. You know, he's like, it's okay. It's okay. Um, let's talk about, thank you, Patrick. Thank you for the info and the insights. Let's talk about your transition. So you died, you had an illness. You died of an, an illness. I think it was pancreatic cancer. It was some kind of a cancer or illness. And so you were sick for a while. So you knew that you were not healthy and that things weren't going well. Did you know that you were going to die? Like, did you really understand the, the severity of your diagnosis? I think this will help for other people who have cancer, who, who have had loved ones with terminal cancer and help them, you know, understand that kind of what's going through your mind when you're a person, you know, about that. He says, yes, I think that's really, that's a really good, like a really good service to do that. I, I will say that there's a foundation in, in part of my name that my wife and I set up to help educate people about the importance of, and I feel like it's cancer. And I feel like, I feel like part of what you're educating people about or helping people about is some kind of childhood thing, though it has to do with kids or affecting children or something. But I feel like what you had was not that, that maybe was either pancreatic or prostate cancer. It feels like a P cancer, cancer with a P on it. Um, I think it's pancreatic cancer. I think I know that maybe, I don't remember. Um, and that's a tough one, you know? So did you know you were gonna die? Like, did you actually know that? Like, okay, this is serious. I'm going to, I'm not going to live through this. I'm not gonna survive this. Well, I think there comes a point, he says. He says, I think there comes a point when you have to just face that. That's just a fact. And you have to recognize, I, I had to kind of come to terms with this isn't my fault. This isn't something I created. This isn't something I, you know, it's not some kind of karma thing. Cancer is not a karma thing. Um, nobody deserves that. You don't earn that. It's not a punishment. I want to be really, I want to be really clear on that. But I had to kind of come to terms with, okay, so this, this is my life. This is my life so far is my life. So you look over 
all of these chapters that you've written for your life and you re you do reflect and, and it can be really deep and it can feel traumatic even at points, like really difficult. You, you question, well, did I make the right decision here? You know, could I have been a better person here? Could I have taken the high road? Um, maybe I should have punched that, th that guy's lights out because he deserved it. And I really wish I would have done that kind of a thing, you know, but it's not, it's not this, it's not like I was tortured or tormented with regret. I don't want people to, to realize that, to, to feel like that. Um, I did have quite a bit of alcohol. <laughs> Like he's showing me drinking, like he's showing me drinking, like, oh my gosh. Um, and I don't know if he was a drinker or if he just was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to, you know, have some alcohol here because it's not like it's going to kill me. Um, and I feel like hard liquor, like scotch or whiskey or something. It's like a kind of a caramel looking thing in a glass like this. And maybe he wasn't, maybe you guys, it might be. Okay, let me see. I'm going to interpret a little bit. I could be wrong. I feel like it might be that he may have had some alcoholic issues in his lifetime. And so he was sober. And then at the end, he was like, well, what's the point of that now? You know, um, but I don't know. I also feel like there's a connection to his dad that his dad was on in heaven. And I don't feel like there was a great relationship. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of confused about that. But I feel like his dad is also on the other side before he was. All right. So looking over your life, kind of, kind of a assessing things you know it kind of sounds like a life review almost he said no that's different this is when you're in your your mind your brain is looking at your human life and you're make, taking an assessment of your life an inventory and you're grading yourself you're, you're grading yourself you're giving yourself grades did I do this well did I do that well you know what could I have done more but it's not I don't want people to feel like there's this um in deep remorse or I'm tortured by oh I should have done this and it's not it's not about that it, it wasn't like that for me it wasn't something I didn't get stuck in the past but I think it's probably a natural thing for people to instantly look back over their life and say was it worth it did I do what I needed to do and I think that's probably just natural but you bring up a good point you you asked about life review or you mentioned it so I would like to talk about that I'd like to speak to that that would be great because life review is a concept that I have experienced in sessions with other people as a medium when I'm talking to someone's loved one who's, who's crossed over into spirit and they talk about the life review process. And when my own father passed away, he's he talked to me about life review process and I saw I can look back and see how when the life review process was actually happening for him while he was in a unconscious medical induced sort of coma in and out state so i understand that too for, as a person experiencing that or watching a loved one do that so please please patrick speak about life review tell us what it is and tell us how it worked for you because i understand that it works different for everyone Correct. He said, he said, uh, yeah, it's pretty customizable over, over here. You know, when you get to the point where you're leaving your body and you're becoming full, uh, fully spirit, fully spirited, then yeah, that's pretty customizable there. Yes. There's a lot of choice at, at that life death point. There's a lot of choice. It's like a big buffet. You know, would you like this? Would you like this? Would you like, there's a lot of choice. I want people to know that. And so then you feel more free freedom and not so um, confined at that those moments. It's as a spirit, as a person becoming spirit, there's a lot of choice and it feels really freeing. It doesn't feel scary. It's not frightening. It's very freeing. So the, the life review process that you're talking about is something that feels like almost like a welcome to help you get comfortable with the way your life has been, the life that you've led, and in order to say goodbye to it, in order to really be able to release it, to leave it when you leave the body, to leave the life when you leave the body. And it's really hard to do that. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why. Because you get so used to being around the people you've been around and you're connected. The connection that you have isn't connected by body, even if it's, you know, your own flesh and blood, your children, your, your wife, your husband, whatever it is, it's, it's not 
just about that. It's not, it's not physical, but there is a, a spiritual component to relationships, to all the relationships you've had, and there are good and there are bad, there are positive, there are negative, but there are all these components are spiritual as well as physical. And you might not recognize that at the time, um, but that's why sometimes it takes a long time to heal from, uh, from a, a split or a loss. And that part is so important. And I feel like the life review gave me personally an opportunity to see how special my human relationships were. My family, um, my children, um, and particularly my son and I, uh, the bonds that we have last forever. And there's no end. There's no end date on that. And it's important for people to understand that, that it does matter. The relationships you have do matter. Not your human understanding of them, but your spiritual connection. That's what matters. And so when you let go of your human body and you let your life go and you merge with the source of light, that's true eternal life extended. And it's like your life is extended, which is probably why they say afterlife but it's kind of ironic because it's not really after life, it's after human life, really. But you become this, this beautiful, loving, uh, powerful beam of light that is connected to other beams of light. And it's, there's no separation, there's no segregation, there's no um, sorting out of things in heaven, whatever you consider or perceive heaven to be, which is life after death. And the death is significant of the human body, but not, it's the birth of the spirit fully. And it's not, constra con it's not um, constrained anymore um, by the human, uh, what the human expectations are, because your mind really does create your reality and it makes it so um, visible to you that the things that aren't visible don't seem real, but really those are the most real things. So love is something you consistently are whether you're in a body or outside of a body. And so that love is what gives you the ability to have the connections then still with your loved ones. So when I died, for example, and when I, I had my final days and, and we knew, I knew that, that my family knew and they knew that I knew. It was like this just understanding that this was, this was we were wrapping this up. And there was a lot of crying from time to time, but there was also a lot of joy, laughter, in between. And I know that sounds odd to say, but the funny moments, you know, the silliness comes back. And you remember those little moments that you may not have really recognized as very super as important as they really were at the time you had them. And when those come back and you kind of cut the tension with the, the laughter and the fun memories and the and in between the tears, you know, and then there's, there's laughter, uncontrollable laughter, and it seems kind of awkward, but it's, it's a natural state. It's, it's the way. It's the way the letting go happens. And I do feel that I was fortunate to be able to have the time to let go and to be complete. I don't feel like I left anything undone. I, I don't. I mean, do I wish I had more time with my loved ones, with my family uh, in my life? Yes, there are things that I, I'm sure I could do. But I, I was really, I got to a point where I felt very, I felt contented, like I was complete with the human, human part of my life. And I don't feel separate from my family even now. I feel, I send them love. I send them the the awareness of the bonds that we have together that that come that flows through love that flows through memories that flows through you know looking at pictures it flows through even the holidays you know that's really difficult for people the first holiday without without the physical presence of the person is really difficult for people but but I want I would like people to understand that in as a spirit spirit in this 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 afterlife play uh with this in this afterlife existence 
we are still there. We are still capable and available and present. And that's part of the healing contract. That's part of the agreement is to follow through and flow that love so that this group that was so important to you as a human consistently gets to be able to evolve and grow and heal. And that is really special and, pre and a precious thing that I want people to be aware of. For my life review, I feel as though that piece of it for me was pretty compact. Um, I felt like I did most of that myself, but when at the point of my death, the very point, the last breath moments, uh, that is when I would say that my life review with others, representative, healing representatives or healing agents like angels, you would say, you would call them angels, that they were present to assist me and give me choices and options for things. And so I got to choose when my last moment was. Although not consciously awake or aware in my body to others who were watching me leave my body and prepare to leave my body, they would not have necessarily seen or noticed this, but I had choices on how this was going to go. And, and I, feel, I feel comfortable that things um, went, went well. You know, I feel like I had choice and I want other people to know that. I think, I think people would find comfort in knowing that their loved ones um, have choice like that. And so that's what I, I would want to share that about the life review process and, and about what it's like after that, you know, what happens after that, you know. That, um, okay, that in and of itself is very, wow, wow, that was, hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So I feel like, wow, Patrick, you know, honestly, I didn't really know what to expect. In fact, I told my husband who helped set up, set up the camera and stuff for me before I came to do um, the conversation with you was I was like, I don't know a whole lot about Patrick Swayze except like the cheesy stuff, <laughs> you know, great dancer, um, um, heartthrob guy and uh, dirty dancing movie you know that kind of thing just the cheesy stuff the superficial kind of stuff and I didn't know what it would be like to talk with you and I you have a great personality there's a lot of energy with you and you feel really positive and um, very insightful so I I mean I, I would like to say thank you I, I really do appreciate it thank you thank you very much for your time I really do appreciate it yeah thank you so for those of you who are watching here, I just had an afterlife conversation with Mr. Patrick Swayze. If you guys have questions that you would like me to ask him, I would be happy to talk with Patrick again in another video. So be sure to take time to go to the comment section, write your questions for Patrick Swayze. And maybe, just maybe, that'll show up on a future video. Remember here at Above Life Channel, the purpose of these weekly channeling videos is to inspire your spirit, to give you hope, to live your life. This is your life, so you live it, live it. Thank you so much for watching.